Hey everybody, Drew Dinkmeyer here at Daily Roto doing a tutorial of our customizable projections and optimizer for the MLB 2018 season. We're really excited about the product that we've released for 2018 here, especially the updated optimizer that we've brought to the table along with our usual customizable projections and felt it would be useful to put together a little tutorial on how we use them. So you'll see the screen that I've started here. This is our optimizer page. It includes all of our projections, customizable along with the optimizer. To be able to run the optimizer, you simply select a slate that you're choosing, whether it's DraftKings main, DraftKings early, night, FanDuel main, so on and so forth. We'll start with DraftKings, use their main slate. Select that, it includes only the games from that slate. Then what you'll notice in our projections is the fact that we have a couple editable fields here. Stolen bases per plate appearance, weighted on base average baseline, ISO baseline. Full means that this is versus both right-hand and left-handed uh, pitchers. Split means it's versus the type of pitcher they're facing today. So George Springer split against Chris Tillman, a right-hander. This would be his weighted on base average baseline and his ISO baseline that feeds into the projections. If you wanted to edit any of these, if you decided, hey, George Springer looks to me like he's going to have you know, a 380 baseline this season, you just up the arrow. You'll see a little arrow pops up that you can revert back to our projection should you choose. You can go there, and then if you save that, that'll be available back to you upon refresh of the page. So when we come back to the page and it refreshes, we'll see that it still has held my edit on George Springer. You see there, and if I want to revert from 380 back to the baseline, I just click that little arrow. As that's moving, you'll see the projection. Our, our original projection here is 10.88 fantasy points. Make sure we get back on the DraftKings main slate. 10.88 fantasy points, but if I adjust this 380, it goes up to 11.05. So as you move these editable fields, they adjust the projection. Similarly, you can also edit the team's uh, team total, and it'll boost, boost the projection or tone down the projection as well. So this is with Houston with a 5.5 implied total, and we'll go back to the normal baseline of 366. If you move it up to a 6 total, all of a sudden we're at 11.18 points. And you would see, in this case, all of the Houston players as we move this total. You can watch the fantasy points column here. As we move the total up, the fantasy points go up. If we move the total down, the fantasy points come down. So we'll go back to 5.5, which is where it was originally set. And now we're back at the baseline areas. The other thing that we've added this year is that you can customize the batting lineup spot because our projections are tied to lineup spots. So if you say, okay, George Springer, instead of hitting first today, let's see what happens if he hits third and we move up Alex Bregman to first and Altuve to second. Now we're down to 10.31. So he's more valuable hitting first then he is third because he's expected to get a few more plate appearances that way. So that's an edible field as well. Um, you can also uh, um, edit the pitcher projections as well. If you go into the pitchers, you can edit things like the, uh, the win probability, the batters faced, the outs, uh, their baselines versus uh, left-handed batters, their baselines versus right-handed batters. Uh, their K percentage baselines, as you adjust the K percentage baselines, it'll adjust the total strikeouts. Um, and you can basically see that the projections would move alongside that. So if I boost Charlie Morton's projection on the K side versus right-handed bats to 25%, his projection moves up. So these are all the different areas that we have customizable projections. And these will all feed into the optimizer that you're, uh, or the optimal lineups that you're trying to create on a given day. The next thing I wanted to highlight is the checkboxes. The checkboxes you'll see all over the place. You'll see them on teams and game situations. You'll see them on individual players. And this is to control your player pool that feeds into the optimizer. So let's say you decided, hey, I want to X out this Philadelphia New York Mets game. I'm gonna remove them from projections. Um, I'm gonna remove the Miami Marlins. I don't want any of their players from my teams today. You see that your player field is narrowing both on the pitcher and the hitter side. And these are the players that you are considering individually uh, feeding into your optimizer. Now, if you choose on the individual player level to really comb through the player pool, you can create your own player pool by managing the checkboxes or the targets. Um, a target is basically the same thing as a checkbox now. The only difference is a target will make sure that player is included in your final player pool. This is mostly useful for players that have poor projections that wouldn't naturally hit our optimal lineups anyway. 
then you can assure that they will be in your player pool to be considered. Now, the better way to handle that is if they have a poor projection and you want them in lineups is to actually try to boost their projection by using some of the uh, customizable editable fields and bumping their skill sets up to bump the projection if you want them in your lineups. If you want to uh, be able to to boost an entire team and say, hey, um, because our optimizer, the way that it works, and we'll show that in a second, you don't select a team up front. You select different stack types, and then it spits out the optimal stacks uh, across all of our projections based on those stack types. So if you wanted to boost a team, let's say, hey, I really want to see Houston stacks. This little arrow next to them will boost. And what it does is it boosts their implied team total and raises everybody's projection already. So the green highlight shows that the boost is on. The unhighlighted shows that the boost is taken off. But when you boost that implied total, it boosts all the projections and they're going to funnel up into the optimal lineups a little bit more frequently. Now let's look at the stack features. To unlock the stack features, you simply go to this little box that has the options on the far right and it, unlo it unveils a series of stack um, options for you. You have five stacks only, five, three, five, two, one. You can be as specific as you want here. If you just want five, three stacks, you can get rid of all these and this will run just five, three stacks. If you want only five stacks only, you can adjust all those. If you want five and four stacks, you can click all those together. If you want everything, and this is what you would run if you wanted like cash game lineups to try to figure out your optimal lineups as well. This will give you a combination of lineups that are five stacks, four stacks, three stacks, and others, which are, hey, there might not be any stacks, there might be some two, 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 so on and so forth. You have the minimum salary threshold that you're set. So all the lineups will, that are generated will have at least 45,000 in total salary spent of the 50,000 that DraftKings allows you. And then we have the desired lines, uh, how many lineups you wanna run. In this set, I'll run 100, which is our default. And you have the ability to choose whether you want a pitcher versus a hitter or not. I often leave this unchecked because I don't want hitters versus my pitchers in my lineup. When I've done all my adjustments, if I've edited customizable projections, if I've boosted teams, if I've chosen to limit my player pool by Xing out players or targeting them, you go to the bottom right hand corner and you click run. When it runs, you'll get this screen that says processing. Please do not leave the page. This will take on average you know, one to two minutes as it kind of generates all the lineups. Maximum is four minutes. If it's gone beyond four minutes, then it's simply uh, stuck and you might want to restart. But in general, we're going to be around one to two minutes on this processing page and kind of working through all the different lineup combinations that we have. So now the lineups have generated. You can see all these different lineups. The populated view is grid. And what this does is it shows you, you know, for DraftKings, here are my two pitchers. And then here are the different lineups that are optimal. Here's how many, uh, how much salary it's spent. Here's how many total points it's generating. You can also choose to view this in a list format where it'll show, you know, kind of across here. Here's the projected points. And you can see it funneling down through the 100 lineups uh, via the optimal uh, projections kind of comes down here. Now, this is the cool part that I really like because if you're able to, if you generated all these lineups, you have 100 lineups, but you don't really know what you have yet. Um, you want to say, let's see all the, let's go back to grid. Let's see all the five man stacks I have. Okay, well, generated five different five man stack lineups based on the information that we had there. Let's see all the four man stacks. We have a lot more four man stacks. So the projections are saying, the optimal lineup route this time is more four-man stacks than five-man stacks. Let's try three-man stacks, and you'll see here you can scroll through. You get all those as well. Now, beyond that, you can also say which teams are the stacks that it's generated. So you use this filter, and you say, okay, how many three-man Houston stacks do I have? Well, a lot of these stacks are three-man Houston stacks. Houston is one of the highest projected teams on the slate. How many four-man stacks for Houston do I have? How many five-man stacks for Houston do I have? Okay, let's see the Dodgers. How many Dodger stacks do I have? I don't have any five-man Dodger stacks, no four-man, but a couple three-man Dodger stacks kind of snuck in here. How many New York Mets stacks? Mets aren't projecting as a, a very strong team on this slate. I believe I X them out, actually, so we're not going to get any there. But basically, that's the idea. You can kind of scroll through and see what teams are coming up as stack options on the slate based on the parameters that you put in and you can filter through. Now, if you decide that you want to take these lineups and, uh, and download them, you click on this download lines button, up comes a CSV, which you can open up and it will have all of these lineups shown. And the thing that I like about the CSV is, first of all, 
if we expand this out, you'll see that it has all the names of the players, but it also has, you know, for DraftKings, the slate IDs here, so you can easily upload onto DraftKings. And then the thing that I think is really cool is each lineup will show you what is the primary stack team, how many players are in that stack from that team, what is the secondary stack team, how many players are in that secondary lineup, and what is the, the third stack team, in, in this case the Angels that has one. So the first lineup is a 4-3-1 stack with four Toronto bats, three Houston bats, one Angels bat, and the projection is 113.08 points, and the cost is 49,300. So in, within this document, you can start sorting should you choose and say, hey, I want to sort by all the you know, primary stack teams that I have um, that are, let's say, you know, Houston. So now I've sorted A to Z. Here are all my primary stack teams that are Houston. I can then sort within those fours, fives, and threes, depending on what I want to uh, use, and I can choose from there. So from here, you can uh, choose to highlight all these player IDs and upload to DraftKings. We can do the same process again over on FanDuel, and it'll give you the same results. Uh, to go back, you just simply restart and it will take you back to the first page. Again, your uh, split, your edits will be saved. So if you wanted to go over to FanDuel, you can do the same thing. We'll do FanDuel main, and we'll just quickly run. And we will be adding more tools, uh, more settings to the optimizer throughout the course of the season. The big one that we plan on adding is exposure controls, uh, as well as number of unique players per lineup. Those are things we're working on, as well as you know lock buttons and different things like that um, to be able to build lineups just around a few players and different things like that. Ultimately, I think this tool is, is pretty powerful in terms of the fact that you don't have to select the team that you want up front to see what stacks make the most sense in terms of uh, the optimal lineups that are created. It creates stacks across all different teams all at once, and then you can choose through which one of those teams you want to use those stacks from. So here are the FanDuel outputs. It's the same situation here. The difference on FanDuel, of course, you don't have five player stacks, you just have four and three. So you can see the differences between the fours and the threes. We can sift through and we can see how many Houston stacks do I have. We can see how many Toronto stacks do I have, as Toronto seems to be the second most popular. We can see if we have LA Dodger stacks. A uh, few less Dodger stacks. Same thing when you download the lines, you get an Excel file or a CSV that opens up, has all the player IDs for FanDuel specific slate. So should you choose to upload, uh, you would just copy and paste this columns into your contest pages or your contest spreadsheet on FanDuel or DraftKings that you upload and you would just uh, upload those lineups there. It has the projection, it has the stack for team one and team two and team three in these instances where there are team team threes as well. Uh, so same process on FanDuel as it is on DraftKings. The FanDuel run one runs a little bit quicker because the lack of multiple position eligibility, the utility spot that FanDuel added uh, does throw a little bit of speed issue into it. But as you can see with the FanDuel one, that was pretty quick, uh, about 30 seconds that it took to deliver back. So that is this tutorial for uh, the MLB optimizer and customizable projections over at dailyroto.com. If you're interested in subscribing to Daily Roto, uh, check us out at dailyroto.com slash premium. We have uh, monthly packages, yearly packages, um, all sorts of packages that you can try us out and try out our Daily Fantasy Baseball product. Uh, that'll be it for me, Drew Dinkmar, and Daily Roto. Thank you guys for your time, and I uh, hope everybody has a great 2018 MLB season. Thanks.